this back through. Watch your camera fall. How do you guys do this one-handed box opening? I don't, I don't understand it. Shock skids for the rear of the ZR2. Must have with those low-hanging rear shocks. Went off-roading with it once and already kind of dinged up the rear shock cover. I'll show that to you. So these are definitely must-have. And these are the peak suspension tie rod sleeves. All right, next on the list for the ZR2. Road protection. You guys are aware of Chevy's fault with the IFS system. Rides better than solid front axle. More articulation, sure. But it's weaker. So these should take care of one of the big weak points in the front end, and they're a pretty easy install. You guys might make fun of me for using this wooden block but you know how Chevy frames can rust from that terrible coating they put on it so if I can protect it a little bit with a piece of wood I'll do it oh stand by short garage problems It's uh, pretty close. So I'm gonna do this video a little different. I'm gonna do like a little bit of a walkthrough I don't know if there's a YouTube video on this. There probably is, but now there'll be another one. I'm just gonna take off the tie rod over here. The nut on top is a 21. Of course, it's a tie rod, so it's stuck in there. It's not just gonna fall out. You don't gotta hit it real hard, it'll come out. All right, so I'm gonna break the jam nut loose. It's a 21 millimeter. Now, that's loose. Pop this. Pop this back out. And then I'm gonna count the times that it's turned. So when I put the one on back on, it should be the exact same spot for alignment. We'll go. One, two, this is on camera because I'll probably forget, three, fourteen, fifteen, okay, so fifteen, don't forget that. 
Now we get rid of this jam nut because this tie rod sleeve is the new jam nut, basically. And you'll see how that works out. So this just slides over here. The weak point of these things is about right here. If you see them breaking, and I'll throw up a picture, it's normally like right in here just after the thread. So this takes care of that and makes that all nice and tight. So spin this on. And then basically just turn this back 15 times and really your alignment should be exactly where it was. All right, one, two, 14, 15. So then this just will get tightened and that's your new jam nut. I'll leave it a hair loose for now so I get a little play. Put your tie rod back in, find your nut, and the same 21 millimeter, give it about four ooga doogas, and that'll be torque to spec. Still a 21, and just tighten this down. That's one installed tie rod sleeve on a 2018 Colorado ZR2. It's that easy. On the other side, I'm just going to put the GoPro on my head and just give you a time lapse from that point of view. Um, it's, it couldn't be any easier, really. Also, something else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trim this. So if you see it, if you see it now, it's obviously not touching the lower control arm at all. These are uh, aftermarket because I did the leveling kit. In my opinion, they're too long. I mean, when the thing, when the truck sits down, these are touching. I mean, your bump stops shouldn't be touching with no droop or anything on there. Let me show you the other side. So this other side, I already cut. I cut that little bottom part off. So imagine another one of these rings, and it would basically be touching when there's the, the suspension's not traveling, um, which to me is a problem. So I'm gonna trim that just like I did the other side. And it's only just a little bit that's getting trimmed off. That's all. It's a little pop and twist. And it's in there. Tight, tight. So to recap guys, these are literally all the tools you need to do this job. You don't need an impact, but you know, it comes in handy. You need a 21 millimeter socket to take your tie rod off and you need a 21 millimeter wrench to take the outer tie rod off the inner tie rod and you use the same one to put on the sleeve. Second will be the rear shock skids needed on any Colorado that does off-roading because the rear shocks hang so low. Also, 
should be relatively easy install. These are just bolt in, no drill at all. All right, let's give these a whirl. Shouldn't be hard either as long as the bolts line up. There's no drilling, there's no cutting, there's nothing. Pop them up there, throw two bolts in and you're done. These are not side specific. One shock goes forward and the other one goes back. So they just kind of face different directions, but you get protection on both sides. I'm not exactly sure what all it comes with. All right, so that's the threaded insert. I think that's for this top one, so the bolt will go through and then go to this. That's why there are no drill system, if I remember correctly. He took some damage. It's a new day. The GoPro died when I was installing the first shock skid, and then it got dark, and then I ran out of time. So here we are, day two. Tie rod sleeves are done. Got the one shock skid done. Just got to do the other one. Um, so I'm going to put that, so I'll get that shock skid on now, and that'll be it. It's a little dark. There's the first one I got on. So let me point out my previous damage. This is what I was talking about. This little plastic protector that comes from the factory. I uh, got caught up on something when I was off-roading. Obviously, I don't need it now. So I actually left it outside of this shock skid just so I could cut it off the rest of the way because there's really no, no point to keeping it. This is why shock skids are important. So I'll walk you through the second one, but the first one, all it is, you, a new sh lower shock mount bolt. You retain the, the same nut. That's how it holds the rear. See this side? That's how the other one's supposed to look with that little plastic shield on there. The OEM bolt. 21 millimeter, so you get your 21 millimeter wrench, impact gun if you have it, shock will end up dropping down. So what I like to do, push it up, then you can turn it temporarily just to sit up there in the little cavity. Otherwise it's going to drop even lower and be even harder to get up. So how this works is it's just an insert. So you insert this from up here and then the bolt that they supply goes through the hole in the end and that's how it holds on the back side. It's, they give you a Loctite too with the kit, which is nice. On the other side, I put the rear in first and that seemed to be the easiest because what it did was it held this in place. So actually this one's going to hold itself in place. It's a little tighter, I see. Either way, I'm still going to put this rear one in first just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Let's get that started. Not going to tighten that up. We're going to leave that loose. The difficult part I found was getting these holes to line up. So you see there, that's pretty close. Not quite. So there we go. Okay, so I want to make sure this is lined up the whole way through, which it is. So now I'll take the 14 millimeter, now that that's tight, and I'll tighten this rear up. And that should hold it all in place. That way this is still aligned. Okay, now that that's out and that's tight, we have the fun job 
getting the shock totally aligned, which is easier said than done. Ooh. All right, that one easier than the other side. Tap this back through, get your thread locker, take your OEM nut that came with it. The bolt that they supplied, instead of a 21, it's now a 19. So you'll have 19 on this side, but you'll still have your 21 millimeter nut on this side. And that is a dat Datton. Am I, am I saying that right? Is it Dayton? Is it Datton? I don't know. Get your Dayton Datton metal fabrication shock skids are installed both sides. There we go guys, the underbody protection for today's episode is done. The tie rods are stronger than OEM and the rear shocks are protected like they should have been from the factory. I mean, you can see, I mean, just look how low those things are. I mean, they, they hang, they absolutely hang. But now there's some protection. You can see, that, I mean, they're even lower than the center diff. I'm not exactly sure why Chevy did that. I assume that's how the regular Colorado shocks mount. So they just went with the OEM mounting point for cost, but man, those are low. But those Datton Fab shock skids, well worth the money. And those things are beefy. I, I assume they're quarter inch steel. So two things that were easy to install, did cost a lot of money, but I feel a necessity for the ZR2, especially if you're going to off-road it. If you're not going to off-road it, then probably a waste of time and money, but I do off-road it, have off-roaded it. Gonna be heading back to Roush Creek uh, once it warms up a little bit, too cold right now. When I, was, when I went in November, it was too cold then as well. So thanks for watching. If you're here for Zero Two content, there will be more. I'm not gonna tell you what I have planned next, but there are things planned. Next video will be back to the full-size Duramax and some modifications to that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.